Hey everybody, welcome back to a new episode of Entropia Content. And try to bear with me today folks. The software I used to do recording just did a whole bunch of major updates. And this is one of my first shows recording. Well, I think, yeah, this is testing half of the new stuff, so hopefully it works okay. Oh yeah, I got some good news. I noticed that my pet balance had gone up, so I had some auction sales. And I checked to see who it was that helped out the show. And let's see who it is. Whoops, doesn't say there. <laughs> no, it was the Lesser Elijah that sold. Just when I was complaining so much yesterday's episode about it never selling, someone helped me out to buy it. And it turns out it was Bonnie Knight. So big shout out to Bonnie. I think that's the same Bonnie that does the stream. She has a, a YouTube channel now too, but I think she's more popular on Twitch right now. I hope she keeps up the YouTube content. Is that the only thing I don't like about Twitch is like she's pointed out before is they don't make an archive of your show. So every time you do these great episodes, if you don't watch them, you can never see them again. So that makes me a little sad when things are gone forever like that, but yeah, hopefully she'll update maybe her best of shows episodes to YouTube more often. That'd be cool. Now, sometimes I like to watch Twitch, but I'm not really into late nights as much anymore. I think she does more late night streams. I could be wrong about that. All right, some fruit. Now, I was thinking I should probably stick away from so much sweating recently. Kind of getting sick of sweating myself just because there's not really much action with other people. It's like I don't mind sweating on Rocktropia alone because there's so much other stuff to do. Like when I get bored, I can pick oil or something or kegs or the AI mission. But in this situation, it's not really that. So let's go check out what's happening at Crystal Peak because I like peaking. <laughs> Yeah, today on the vape menu, just some same old white rhino with a bit of oil. Oh, getting so sick of the taste of stale weed. It's nasty. Oh. You gotta hand it to white rhino though. It's such a tasty strain that even though it's a year old in the jars, I can still like freaking taste the white rhino like I would pick it out from other strains. It's got a distinctive taste that really lasts. Yeah, I sort of was a bit on the cranky side yesterday's episode. I had a whole bunch of bad news compounding yesterday, but a whole bunch of good news too, so it wasn't a disaster of a day overall. Now I decided to examine the damage because I'm like, man, I noticed I have been looking a little bit like Jabba the Hutt in my streams lately. I'm like, holy fuck, how much have I let my overeating get out of control this time? So I fucking went on the scale to see the damage and it was pretty horrifying. It was actually substantially over what I thought, worst case scenario. <laughs> Alright, so we got some people here. Oh yeah, that reminds me, since I got some help from Bonnie, I can do my shopping on auction now. Now I was getting some good vibes yesterday when I opened up the, what was it, the Next Island information, found out they have some new ship blueprints. But I remember hearing that previously and I came and tried and I did a, a thousand ped crafting rod fishing for them and didn't have any luck. So I'm thinking either the print isn't lootable with my trick, or I have to keep trying it. So that's some good news and bad news, is my trick might not be good enough to get the best prints required, but there's still a chance it might work, so I won't let my hopes down completely. Alright, so I still got that wool on auction for another 30 ped. That's later today. So maybe I can go a little bit crazy and just buy everything on... Uh, the last of my pad. This trick is dangerous because man, if it fails, it's like there's all my thousand pet into one trick. And that's dangerous in Entropia, putting all your pet into one basket. Now let's check uh, 
Yeah, Arcadia. Arcan. Now, I hope people don't go crazy buying up all the Arcan once they see my trick because I don't want the price to fucking skyrocket it and make the trick not possible to work anymore. So I'm looking for around 400 peds worth. Fuck, man. There's 540 and 100. So I'll have to wait until those stacks are a little bit closer to the, the size I need. If anyone has any Arcan that they can sell, want to help out the show, let me know. It'd be nice to buy it for as cheap as 103%. Maybe I should do that. I noticed when I bought a stack of Arcan that was like closer to four or five hundred ped, they charged me shitloads in auction fee deliveries. Like you know that what is it, twelve hour delivery fee slow for cheaper? It was still over twenty ped. And I was like, fuck man, that should have been around two ped. So maybe if I buy like smaller stacks for cheaper prices and then ship those individually, sure I'll be shipping more, but at least that way I'll fucking have uh, lower shipping costs. Like I'll ship, what is it, a hundred peds worth four times for a total of two, four, six, eight ped fees and deliveries. Or ship the 400 ped stack and pay 20 ped in deliveries. See what I'm talking about? I don't know, my math could be way off. I wouldn't be surprised, but let's check around. Yeah, this is probably a dangerous thing to do, because shit, I should save my money to buy a larger stack. Fuck. Alright, let's try it. Lower shipping fees. Let's check what is the shipping fee for this one. Oh, it was 288 so there was an extra dollar per one, or Project Entropia dollar. Now, so people might be concerned that I'm showing off too much of my trick already before I'm actually doing it, but... Technically, this trick doesn't even work every time, so I would encourage everyone to wait and watch my video to show a little bit more tips and to improve your odds. You could try it already on your own. I'm sure some avid entropians have already figured it out. Alright, see this 420 stack, 420, <laughs> this 420 stack of Arcan Polymer, when I shipped it here, there was a 20 ped fee in delivery, so I was like, fuck man, that's pretty expensive. I only got 50 ped of veneer, but I'm hoping it'll be enough. I've noticed the veneer, sometimes when I get use it, I get a lot back from the machine, so... That could end up balancing it out. Right now, if anyone else wants to help out the show, one way they can do it is by getting a hold of some of the ancient grease deeds. Just pick this freaking what is it called? Extro Entropy Exchange. Click that shit, yo. All right, before we continue on, let's do a quick little fundraiser for my show. One little spin of the, the Bitcoin free lottery. If anyone else wants to help out the show and they don't have the money for Patreon, I highly encourage you to check out this free lottery. It's not a completely free lottery. Obviously, you can buy more tickets, but they give you a free ticket every hour if you come to the website and spin it. And every time you do that, it helps out my show. I'll show you with the, the referral thing. Right now we have 21 people, fans of the show, that are helping with the free spins every hour. And every time they do, they're getting tickets for this lottery. 
And every time they do too, it gets me tickets as a bonus for being the, the referral person. So yeah, every time you guys are doing that spin, it may not seem like much, but you're getting me tickets for the lottery. And you can see sometimes the people with 100 tickets win it. So you never know. It's possible. Yeah, and they got other ways you can bet and earn your money playing this. And I find that if you want the fastest way to do it, check out my video, Finishing Quick is my specialty for Bitcoin lottery. I'll show you some really fast ways to either go broke or to make it big. And I was thinking it's kind of a dangerous thing to do if you're doing it with your own money, but if you're just doing it with this free spin money, hey, what have you got to lose, right? Uh, it's nice to see some more players hanging out at Next Island. I wish we had enough for a sweat team. Alright, well I don't want to get too much into the sweat. Need a little break from that today. It's kind of a shame, because holy shit, I'm over 4k for... Yeah, that Lesser Elijah run is going to be pretty good, I think. If I could get up to 10k, how much Lesser... Holy shit, I got 96 ped worth. Yeah, that's pretty good. Won't be such a bad crafting run. Now, I'm getting pretty anxious for the crafting run. It's funny, before I'd been doing so much crafting in those episodes, I started to get sick of it. And now after switching to a few weeks of, or I guess a few days of sweating, I'm already getting to the point like, shit, I want to go back and do some crafting again. <laughs> See, I think that's one of the advices for playing Entropia and not playing it mindlessly. Try to keep variety of what you're doing. If you keep doing the same thing too many times, you're likely to get bored of it, no matter how much you like it. It's the same thing with a lot of things in life, right? <laughs> I really just want to do some exploring today's episode. So maybe I'll drop myself somewhere I don't have many teleporters and go for a stroll. See if I can find one or two. Like maybe start here and work my way south. I don't know if there's more teleporters around there. Probably is. Or I could go here and work my way north. There should be some teleporters up there that I've never got before. Yeah, that looks kind of exciting. What I like to do when I'm exploring new planets is sometimes not check the big map, like just cheat and find out where all the teleporters are. Make it a bit of an adventure. I do the same thing in real life all the time too. I'll go to a city on a tight deadline and have to take a bus somewhere on a transit system I've never used before. It's like, fuck maps, I'll just go and wing it and see if I can find my way. <laughs> It's weird how many times it works, and when it doesn't, it gets you into a, an even more interesting adventure. <laughs> now, some people that like to do everything like planned and controlled might drive them nuts, but I do that a lot. That's one of my tricks to doing things in reverse. So if you do things spontaneously, you end up doing it in reverse. Yeah, I remember one of the last trips I was in Toronto. I think, yeah, it was one of my chiropractor trips or, or no, maybe it was one of my concussion doctor appointments. I just went for a walk throughout the city to see what I could find instead of taking the bus for the first half of the, well, the middle portion of the journey. And then as I was walking around, I found a lot of the things that I was researching, like clues for different ancient mystery sites, like happened to stumble across the, the Rosicrucian library in Toronto. It's like I had a feeling they had one there, but I didn't know where it was. So it's kind of neat to just randomly walk to it. So I took some pictures there. And had I planned it, like just looked up the Rosicrucian library and went to it, I would have missed some of the other clues on the way. Oh well, yeah, what it was is I was planning to look up uh, a church along the way to the doctor's appointment. 
And because the church had connections to one of the secret societies that's involved in some of the mysteries up north. So then when I was walking to that church, I happened to stumble across the Rosicrucian Library, which also connected to the, the society at that church. So it was kind of neat. Yeah, it looks like I'm going to have to take the water most of this way. I got these fucking creatures everywhere. And if I can't take the water, then I got to fly, and that uses up oil, so... Hopefully I can drown these creatures that are chasing me before they kill me. Yeah, so if you're ever a new Entropian player, I notice a lot of new Entropians have been watching my videos. Exploration is probably one of those things in the game that you can mix it up with. Like some days you can collect oil, some days you can collect kegs, some days you can do the AI mission. Then other days you should just randomly explore different planets that you haven't been to. And it's nice, the one thing advantage Atropia has, it's such a huge environment that if you ever did happen to explore every inch of one planet, it would probably take you like months. And then after that, you have like how many other planets you could still do. And then plus if you're mixing it up, so you don't do all the exploring at once. You do one day of exploring, one day of grinding, collecting sweat, Another day of grinding, collecting oil, keeps it fresh. I think I gotta try to focus on doing that too for my episodes, because I don't want to keep doing the same content every day. Kind of gets weird. It gets boring to do too. I want to keep it fun for me to record also. Alright, we're lucky there's no creatures in this water. Sometimes I started using this trick of swimming to get to different places on maps and found out the water can sometimes have really strong mobs in it too. Like fish. <laughs> or sharks. Yeah, so what I did is I went upstairs and I checked my trusty scale, the one that I know it's like the old-fashioned needle kind that it's never wrong. So I checked it and I was at fucking 115 pounds. I was like, holy shit. Like I was worried that I was over, or not, 215 pounds. I was worried that I was going to be over 200. And then to be over 210, I was like, oh fuck. It's, the problem with me is, is I've got a sleep apnea and I have to keep my weight under 220 or I'll actually choke in my sleep and could possibly die. So I'm like, oh fuck, five pounds away from death. So it's like, shit, I really got to fucking turn this around. There, there's motivation for you. Yeah, so already this morning I started to cut back. I can't remember, did I even eat anything yet? I don't think so. Last night, I started to phase out the fucking junk food again. I gotta cut the sugar addiction. Hardcore. Now, I think the only thing that's really saved me from the choking so far is a little bit of the muscle or weight that I've gained recently. It's a bit of muscle, I'm hoping. Because I've been working out the whole time, so I figured if I go up a couple pounds, it could be some muscle. Oh yeah, and then I started getting my cardio back because yeah, I bought the membership for my university disc golf course. So now it was, uh, I think came to like 30 bucks with tax. And I got a year membership for that price. I couldn't believe how many people in my disc golf club were like, holy shit, we're just going to counterfeit it because it's a piece of paper. I'm like, you're going to risk counterfeiting this membership. And the thing only costs 30 fucking dollars. Like, dear God, you can't even order a pizza for that much these days. And the only reason the university did that fee and the thing is so they could get people to sign a waiver form agreeing that they wouldn't sue the university if they got hurt on the course. Which I think makes sense. Like before the university was saying, hey, only students could play because they're the only ones covered by the insurance. Which kind of made sense. I know some people are criticizing that move, but... There's always two sides to every coin, you know? Yeah, so despite getting the bad news about uh, being overweight, I was like, holy fuck, at least I got 
myself on track physically I'm back to biking to the course every day and it's a nice bike ride it's so motivational because when I bike there there's a whole bunch of people jogging and biking up and down the trail getting fit and I'm like holy shit this is kind of nice to be surrounded by people doing the same thing but still doing the social distancing even when I was biking I made sure to like stop like at least like 10 feet back of everyone so when I came to crossing lights, I wasn't actually right at the light waiting in a huge crowd of people. Alright man, this is really hard to explore this place because I got so many mobs everywhere. Lucky I got some fruit off the beginning. Oh yeah, and then I was at the disc golf course. There was another guy, roughly my age, I think, maybe a couple years older. But he was playing on the course, and I just waved to him. It's like, uh, I wasn't even sure if I knew him. I just tend to wave to every player in case it's someone I know. And then, uh, as I was playing, I eventually caught up to him, because I usually, oh fuck, someone's killing me. Oh, are they in the water? Oh, it's a shark. Fuck. Should have been paying attention. Didn't see the shark get me. It was funny, I was just talking about sharks too. Right? <laughs> oh, that was cool. I spawned at a new revival point. And it looks a little bit deadly here. A lot of fucking creatures all around me. Fuck. Alright, maybe I can make my way back to the water. Yeah, so I met this other guy at the disc golf course, and I forgot that I had played with him before in a city called Guelph that's near us. Guelph you may have heard of before. It's always the, the city that's on the news with those Nestle water plants. Because Guelph just happens to be the place that Nestle likes to get all their water from because it's the best fucking drinking water around. You know what's the weirdest part about Guelph and the drinking water being the best? All the land in Guelph has high amounts of radiation. Oh, here's some fruit on the ground. So when you have a basement in that area, like your house, you have to get the ground tested to make sure your basement isn't leaking radiation. Isn't that fucked? And why does that make the, the drinking water good? <laughs> so that's a weird coincidence. I don't know if anyone's scientifically minded if they know the answer to that. Maybe scientists are still trying to figure out what's with that correlation. Or maybe it's just a coincidence. No, so what our university in Guelph does is they study radiation there and they mine it too. So it's like if you want to take courses to do with radiation and stuff, like medical stuff, I think that's what they use a lot of the radiation for. Medical radiation. No, but that's the city you'll probably go to if you're a student and you're trying to take courses for learning medical stuff with... I guess what they use that chemotherapy radiation, something like that. Man, this sucks. Can't get over it. Oh yeah, one of the viewers, I couldn't believe it. Such a cool guy. He's like, uh, he was giving me a little bit of a hard time saying that he doesn't like my theories in the in the show it's like uh, I don't actually disagree with him there because a lot of the theories I come up with that are just that theories and I often come up with new ones every year that often disprove the previous ones so if he has any information that can debunk any of the theories I'm more than willing to hear it it was cool too he was saying he would listened to the whole show even though he hated it or he disagreed with it or whatever I was like that was pretty cool it's like most people when they hear something they disagree with, they just shut it out, right? So that was pretty nice of him. And he left a comment on my video. I was like, holy, what a nice guy. It's like how many times do people watch the video and like it, but they don't have the time to leave a comment about it. So I was like, that was pretty nice of him. And I always like a little bit of criticism too, because usually if you get a YouTube chat that's just filled to people that agree with you, you're not really doing a very good job because some people should disagree with you 
if you want to have like an exciting show, it shouldn't be all agreeing. There's got to be some conflict to make it interesting. <laughs> now, I think he kept it civil for the most part. Wasn't much swear words or anything, so that was cool. And I'm not even really against swear words, you can fucking tell that. <laughs> No, and I used to be involved with a lot of wild research topics like gravity wells and ancient mystery stuff, so I'm definitely not like new to people disagreeing with what I talk about. They can take it. <laughs> For the most part. <laughs> Might end up vaping a little. <laughs> Can I get down this ledge without dying? I'm so fucking low on health, I almost want to recharge a little bit before I attempt it. Or I just want to take a vape. <laughs> Man, it's so tempting to take some of the money I saved up from Entropia Partners withdraw it right now and then pump it into my thousand ped crafting trick to make sure I can do it with the full thousand so I guess when the trick time comes I'll go into some details about how I stumbled across the trick uh, and ways that other people can try to imitate the same thing. Oh, fuck. Not saying this trick is going to work every time, because obviously it's not a glitch or something. It's, there is some ways you can win and lose doing it. But I was just thinking of all the ways that I've ever done crafting, this is by far, not even close, the, the best profits I've gotten from crafting. I know some people are probably surprised that you can profit in the game crafting in a method other than using those explosive projectile prints. And I have profited using explosive projectile prints, but even that has been very rare for me. Just once I'm on Rhea. Right, so where the fuck was that shark? It's probably in that water, eh? Right, I need to be going this way. I got turned around pretty bad there. I was thinking it was that way. Thank God for maps. You know, one time I left my maps at home just to make the adventure a little bit more exciting. When I was up north going to the our ancient Stonehenge in Ontario for the first time. And it's like a good like eight hour drive up north from Toronto. So you're like way out in the sticks. Like if people don't understand in Toronto, you only have to go like an hour north and then you're already around like moose and bears and shit. So once you go like eight hours, you're like borderline fucking the edge of civilization. Like a lot of places there, you look into the woods and then there's no road again for like 10,000 miles. So like, it's definitely going to be some gaps of just animals and wilderness. So anyways, I was going on that trip up there, and I'm like, uh, I looked at the map quite a bit before I left, so I'm like, I'll test my memory out, see if I can remember. What do you know, we explored the whole fucking afternoon, couldn't find it, because I couldn't remember. <laughs> but then thankfully, just before we decided to start giving up, thinking that there weren't even there, I started to remember a little bit of the map, which led me to this road that was somewhat close to it. And we ran into this guy, and this guy, I asked him, I like waved him down, he stopped his truck. Or no, he pulled his truck up to us, I think, to ask something. And then we were actually, yeah, that's what it was. He was looking for his lost dog, he said. He said he lets his dog ro run around free in the fucking wilderness that's full of wolves and bears and moose. And that he was out looking for it. <laughs> So I asked him about the Stonehenge, and yeah, he gave us directions on how to find it the rest of the way. We made it to it and found it. But then it was funny, too, because 
that was a little clue to something that was going to be going on. Like I heard that some of the locals up north would like spy on people that would come from the city, see what they're doing when they go up north. So I was like, it did seem a little bit odd that someone would say that they were looking for their lost dog. I guess it's possible, but like way out in the middle of nowhere, right? <laughs> So yeah, then when we happened to be doing more exploring up north, different trip, different group of people, same thing happened. When we got to this really fucking sketchy place where it's like an abandoned military base, fucking equipment all over the place and warehouses that people have been playing paintball in and shit. Bears and fucking moose everywhere. So we were camping there and then same thing. Someone came and it almost looked like they were spying on us, but they said they were looking for their lost dog. We're like, same with you, eh? It's like, you're also letting your dog out roam in the woods full of fucking animals that could kill it easily. <laughs> so I don't know, maybe that was like a little clue. Leaving the maps behind ends up getting you clues, right? Whereas if you just follow the map, you might miss some of it. I say that as I use the map and I keep getting fucking lost. <laughs> right. Before I struggle up this cliff anymore, let's get a quick message from the sponsor. Today's show was brought to you by... Crack! Crack! It'll fuck you up. Woo! Welcome back, everyone. Now that software I use so that they're trying to improve the local recordings and the exploit camera software. I'm testing both of them out right now. I did get less messages saying that the computer was lagging, but I'm pretty sure it was just it was still lagging. It just didn't get the message. Alright, guess we'll continue this way. Or can I? <laughs> Oh, fuck. That does not look good. I guess I could walk up around there. Hoping in these walking adventures I can at least pick up a little bit of fruit and stones on the way. Sometimes the price of fruit and stones can fluctuate and it's not such a bad idea to hold on to it until you find someone that really needs it. Or I just put it on my shop and my shop in Rocktropia tends to sell fruit at a decent rate. Now I was tempted to take out my vehicle and fly across that chasm. Then I was thinking going in the chasms aren't always bad, right? <laughs> Mind out of the gutter. <laughs> Living on the edge. <laughs> now and then the other bad news I got yesterday was I was totaling the last prices to see how much my pool house was going to cost with all the building materials and the prep building materials too. And it was kind of sad that I came up with the exact amount, basically, that I had. So if I did build it, I would end up going completely broke. So in that situation, I had to face the reality that as much as I want it, I still don't want to go completely broke. So I'm going to have to wait. And it's kind of a weird situation, too, because the prices are at a building premium high right now. So technically I could just wait to build it and maybe the price will go down. But I have a feeling that these pandemic prices will be the new normal and that things are still going to only go up. But we'll see. Shouldn't get too pessimistic. Now on the bright side, at least I can take some of that pool house money and bank it and save it for emergencies. Because we've got some more bad news too that some of my uncle's funding from the government might be cut off soon. So I was like, holy shit, in that situation, I really shouldn't be wasting money. Now in Canada, it's pretty nice. Usually the government will help families out that are looking after disabled people, give them extra money to cover some of the expenses, but eh, some issues with that recently.
No, it's kind of weird too, as my uncle's health actually has declined to the point where it's reaching, we might not be able to look after him much longer. Even yesterday, he was attacking me when I was trying to take him to the washroom. Crushed my arm pretty good. I was thinking it sucks too, because it's my disc golf arm and I got the tournament coming up. Really shouldn't be getting it crushed. <laughs> No, he's very stubborn, so it's like, sometimes I have to take him to the washroom or he's going to be getting like a rash from sitting in his own, his own waist, but he'll fight it and not want to go. Now, I think that stress in general has stressed me out a lot, so yesterday I started pounding back the, the vodka to try to see if that would help. <laughs> And it did quite a bit, but I shouldn't keep doing that because I don't want to fucking rot my teeth and then need a dentist appointment. Fuck that shit. Now, thank God, I finished like, I don't know, like, I think two or three thousand dollars worth of dentist work in like February, just before the fucking lockdown pandemic shit started. So I was like, thank God. Oh, we got some creatures. Sand boars. Keep the fuck away from them. I don't know if I'm getting close to a new teleporter. I get that feeling. There's new creatures here. Now the other good news at least I got yesterday was I got to practice with another guy my age that's about the skill level probably a lot of the people I'll be playing against. And we were neck and neck for the game. Not literally. Oh. <laughs> and yeah, a few holes I won, few he won, so I kind of got my hopes up. But the only bad thing that went too is I noticed I damaged my disc quite a bit, so I'm like, fuck. I really should break in a new one just before the tournament starts. Bad timing. You now with disc golf, if you hit too many trees with your disc, eventually it'll change the disc so it's not the same shape. And when it's not the same shape, obviously it's not going to fly as good as it used to. In a lot of cases, the fucking discs are made in Europe somewhere, like Scandinavian countries, so it takes forever to ship them. And then when you do get the disc, you'll have to break it in too. Some people joke where they just fucking whip it at a tree a few times. <laughs> Alright, we got some creatures. Level 20 Desert Crawler. Never even heard of these creatures. It's a shame, I want to go the opposite direction. I was hoping I could get to the water in the north. You know, it's a good thing about checking these type of areas for stones and fruit because you have a better chance of noticing them because the ground is so plain that's actually what they do up north like the NASA who is it Von Brown when he uh, or Von Braun when he went up north looking for meteors for NASA that's what they do is they walk around the ice and the fucking snow because they said that it's easier to see meteors that have fallen it's like any rock that's on the surface, you can almost guarantee it's a meteor. Or else it would have been buried by the snow a long time ago. But yeah, and that's what I was going to talk about too with that other viewer who was commenting about my ideas for changing the water levels on the planet. I was thinking he mentioned that heating or cooling the waters, like changing the temperatures, wasn't a good idea. They would be impossible. Then if we could do that, we could already control hurricanes. I was actually agreeing with them on that too. I was thinking I wouldn't try changing the water temperature of the oceans. What I would do if I had the the money and the the political power 
like armies to help me build shit, like the entire U.S. army or something. But what I would do is just send a giant expedition to the South Pole, like Antarctica, build a fucking monumental dam, like a dam so big it's like the size of the U.S., and then just fill it with as fucking much water as you need. So you could put a big dent. I don't know, like, I guess maybe there's a theory that you couldn't fit that much water. I was thinking maybe because you had it all, you could freeze it there. Just stack the ice, like, really high. Have it like a fucking iceberg that's like a hundred stories tall or something. Across the entire continent. I think that would put a dent in the water level. And then the reason I would do that is so that I could raise the, or lower the water level enough to expose Zealandia. I don't know if anyone's ever heard of Zealandia before, but back during the Ice Age days when the ice, when the North Pole shifted to the middle of the Atlantic, created the Ice Age. Fuck man, I can't get to this water. I'm just going to make a run for it and hope that wherever I spawn will be close enough to a fucking place. New teleporter. Come on, new teleporter. Maybe these creatures have low aggression and won't attack me. Oh, cancel that plan. Oh fuck, I'm dead. There, I made it to the new area. <laughs> Hopefully that counted when I crossed the new land. Alright, come on. Where will they spawn me? Oh, yeah, I have to click OK. Wish me luck, everyone. I'm hoping they spawn me somewhere over here. But I bet you I just crossed the border and I'll spawn somewhere here. Or here. Or back to where I fucking came from. Let's check. Oh, right where I am. I did not anticipate that. <laughs> the only shitty thing is this is a revive point. It's hoping for a teleporter. Yeah, I'll keep the axe equipped so we can make this exploring a little bit sped up. Might actually have to check the Arcadia teleporter list at this rate. Keep feeling finding one. If I can make it to the water, I think I'll hang a left, try to get to that teleporter on the tip of the left of the island. Yeah, that abandoned military base that I was camping next to, and the another person came looking for their dog. It has a history of UFO sightings back when it was a, a military base still and the military actually officially recorded the UFO sightings and they were worried that it was the Russians because it was uh, back during the Cold War and the whole reason we had that base there was one of the, the spots to keep the Russians out or detect if they were attacking from the north. So once UFO fucking started showing up, they're like, oh fuck, is it the Russians? Right? I actually bought some property right across the river from the base at that time. We camped there. There was a bit of paranormal stuff happening. It was a weird place. It's kind of a gross story, so maybe I'll save it for another day. <laughs> Alright, it looks like the water, but I don't want a chance going right in it in case that shark is there. So I'll stay on the edge. Help me monitor if the shark shows up. Let me close this for now, make it a little bit more exciting. Adventure without the map, like I was just saying. I think if I stay near the water's edge, that should keep me in the path I wanted to go. Yep, 
Yeah, did anyone else try out that fucking link where you can win the free shirt and the free ped? I did it, but I wasn't... Oh, there was some fruit. All right. This adventure is paying off. I'll be rich. <laughs> Just to taunt that guy, he's like, man, you're not getting a lot of ped doing this. I'm like, well, I'm not losing a lot, am I? <laughs> Now, so far, this adventure has been zero losses just because I'm not equipping any armor. All I did was I didn't gather any sweat today. Let's see how much rocks and shit did I pick up. Not much. Okay, root. I could have swore I picked up some green ones. Maybe I threw them in storage already. Or it could be last night. Yeah, and if the viewer thinks that my theories are pretty wild, he should check out some of my gravity well research. I'm actually looking into getting a guest on the show via Skype or other methods that can debate me on some topics. So if you have any other wild theories that you want to debate at all, let me know. I usually try to see two sides to every coin, so even if you got a theory that I don't agree with, I'll, I'll try to find some ways I still like it. No, it's weird too. I don't know if anyone noticed. I think I talked about it on the last show. Might have been the other game. YouTube was kind of screwing me around with views the other day. Or it could have been where I shared the video. I did a gravity well research video, shared it, and it got over 200 likes within the first hour or two. I was like, holy shit, got its new uh, referrals on Bitcoin. Everything was going great. And then when I logged in the next day, my video had gone down to under 80 views. Or 80 something. Oh, some more stones. But then I found out is that uh, YouTube will sometimes remove views if they find out that some algorithm was giving you views by accident or like one of those bots that's clicking on shit. So apparently that's where over half the views from that video came from. And I shared it on Disclosed TV, and I shared it on Reddit, and I shared it on Facebook. I think one of each. What I used to do is share a whole bunch of links and Facebook groups, but then I realized that really you shouldn't flood one social media platform with a whole bunch of links. Just space it out over multiple platforms. Yeah, I guess with Facebook, I do over-exaggerate with that, because sometimes I will. How many did I get? 20 rocks? Sometimes I do share, like, two or three groups. Well, three in total, but one is one of mine. So if I'm sharing it in my own group, I don't really consider that too much sharing. Well, it's funny, sometimes I'm tempted to watch the game on the other screen because it's like one second ahead. <laughs> it's like, why don't I just watch it on the one where I'm recording? It's one second behind, but at least I don't have to keep looking away. <laughs> now, I've proven that I can still find the fruit, even in stones, even while I'm running with the axe. Just got to pay attention. That's a pretty big challenge for me. <laughs> yeah, the only good news I could... Oh, there's some more fruit. I'm surprised. After I did the repairs to my bike, and I got the back tires spinning better, it's like, fuck, man. I can't believe how far and fast I can bike now. I thought I was just getting in bad shape, but I think it was the fucking bike. Because, man, now that I've repaired it, oh, there's some more. It's like, am I finding a lot, or is it just me? <laughs> yeah, I was fucking flying on the bike, and I wasn't getting tired or out of breath or anything, so I was like, thank God. That was some good news. 
But I've had some bad bike rides where it's like I can barely make it there, I was so tired. So to be able to go back and forth to the lake without getting tired at all is pretty nice. I think it's about 10 kilometers, so it's a decent bike ride. I think 10 kilometers there and back. Yeah, the only shitty thing about the lake is it's very shallow right now. Almost all the water is gone because we're in a drought. But the drought's supposed to end today. Which really kind of sucks. All the gardens for the past two, three weeks needed water or they would all die. And we didn't get it, so we had to water all our plants. And now it's come to the point where they need to stay dry or they'll rot. And now it's going to pour rain. So it's like fucking the weather is the exact opposite of what we need to grow. Same thing happened last year, so I'm not that surprised. Fucking nature. <laughs> it's like, who is here first? <laughs> Alright, let's check. How many fucking fruits am I at now? Oh, I found more of the same kind. Maybe that's what it is. Stacking it. Well, so if anyone's on Next Island and they need a good spot to pick fruit, it seems like this walking around the beach up north ain't so bad. Maybe just as I said that, I'll never find any anymore. <laughs> I wonder how far I can run up this beach. Yeah, there's one beach on Lake Huron that I like to do that. Just walk up the beach and see how far I can go. This actually looks just like Lake Huron. Because it's so far across to see the states on the other side that you can't see it. it. Looks like an ocean. And the beach is really big like this. Yeah, back when I was growing up, we used to go on Lake Huron on the beach. Hold huge bonfires. I was surprised like the logs and trees that would wash in from the shore you could just drag them and throw them on the bonfire so we built it bigger and bigger and bigger at one point we had like 10 people there that were helping carry giant logs and throwing those in <laughs> so you can imagine the flames from that fire got so big that it's like say from where I'm standing here in the game right now if you looked way in the horizon, this was where the fire was. Obviously, you couldn't feel the heat from it. But then if you walked down to the beach shore and felt like where the, the fire was still on the edge of the water, you could feel it this far. And it was like that far away in the horizon. I was like, holy fuck, man. We made a huge fire. <laughs> no, the only reason we stopped adding wood to the fire is it got so hot that we couldn't get close enough to it to actually throw the wood on. We had to be like standing like 40 feet back just to not get burned. <laughs> uh, we were kind of lucky that the Coast Guard never came to like complain. Because even though we had buckets and water, technically I think it would still be hard to put that sucker out. We couldn't get close enough to throw the buckets of water onto it. <laughs> But really it's on the beach, so what is it really going to burn? The only danger would be if coals from it flew and hit something. Oh, there's some more fruit. Right, this is like my best fruit picking adventure ever. It's like, thanks for watching everyone. I don't know if it's your good luck or what it is. Maybe I just found the ultimate fruit picking location. No, sadly that beach ended up getting bought up by some really rich hockey players and I think they put up private property signs everywhere so we couldn't keep having bonfires there anymore. And that's the one hard thing about when you see your population grow really big. As much as it's nice to have huge parties of people, it's like 
you start to see all the small remote locations that you used to be able to go to just get completely crowded with people. I don't know how Japan and everything handled it. Didn't their population get ridiculously high too? <laughs> I was talking to someone about conventions though, they said it was awesome because when you go to convention in Japan, they would have so many people that it was like like a hundred times the size of the biggest convention in North America. <laughs> and if you're looking for high attendance rates and like running booths and making sales as a person at a convention, that's pretty cool. So there's always going to be positive and negatives to having a giant population. <laughs> now I think a giant population really depends on what age you are too, right? Like when you're younger, you want a giant population so you can go out and party and meet new people. But then as you get older and married, like married people tend to want smaller <laughs> areas because they've already met the person. <laughs> I noticed that with the disc golf community all the disc golfers that were married are like hey let's not tell anyone about disc golf keep the numbers low and then all the guys that are into partying and still young they're like hey let's get everyone into disc golf and make it a huge party <laughs> Now this kind of reminds me too, the one time I was running around Toulon Explorer, I just happened to be picking up items, picked up one, boom, got a Hall of Fame. I was like, what the fuck? How did I get a Hall of Fame by picking up shit off the ground? And it turned out I found the first item of something. So I got a first to discover Hall of Fame by picking up shit off the ground. <laughs> Wouldn't that be a cool episode? <laughs> Wish I was recording back then. Maybe I'll get luck like that again, but I doubt it. I know, I was hoping to find one new teleporter this episode, and so far, no good, huh? <laughs> Where the fuck am I? Holy shit, I made it all the way up north. Just like my exploring adventures in real life, I always end up in the middle of nowhere up north. Maybe I'll find a Stonehenge. <laughs> Yeah, that'd be some pretty cool lore to add to Entropia. Add like megaliths and stonehenges and pyramids. I don't know, is there a pyramid in Entropia? I'm trying to think. I don't think so. Now, if anyone's wondering how much you can sell these rocks and fruit for, I don't really follow the price of rock too much. If anyone's heavily into the rock, maybe they won't let us know. <laughs> but uh, fruits, I think on the low end you can sell a thousand of them, or 1k, for 4 ped. But I think recently I've seen the prices skyrocket to over 10 ped. So it might depend on which fruit you have too could be some vegetables who the hell wants those <laughs> now let's check out how much fruit and vegetables I picked up 20 stones 87 114 it's a pretty decent haul Like you got a picture, 500 of them in total was worth, what What did I say there, 10 ped on the high end for a K. So it'd be almost 5 ped that I made today, if I could find a decent sized stack. I don't know, sometimes I've been walking and I'll find stacks that are over 100. I like those. It's like a global picking fruit. Let's 
try some really fast running. See if I can find fruit. Oh, I was going to say, see if I can find fruit at high speeds. That was fucking high speed running and I still found it. Makes you wonder, could you like drive around and pick up fruit? <laughs> Remember back in the day when I first got into fruit picking, you had to walk slow. Or it just wouldn't appear in time. Holy, I got 77 on that pick. That was a pretty sweet pick. All right, I think what I'm going to do for a bit of excitement is try hitting the teleport. See if I teleport to anywhere decent. Hoping somewhere good. Fuck, I did all this walking. I don't think I got one teleporter. No, so I shouldn't be bashing Next Island. If people want to make some extra pet on the side, instead of doing sweating the Minotaurs and Crystal Peak, you can also pick fruit pretty good in this desert up north along this beach. You can see I almost gathered about five ped in about an hour. So I don't know how much sweating works out too, but I'm pretty sure this was more profitable than sweating by about five times. Heck, this was even more profitable than a lot of oil rigs. <laughs> And the experiments were good too. Not only did I prove that you could pick up the fruit and see them in time with the axe, but even running down hills at high speeds. That was some pretty successful experiments. Ah, oh, fuck man. Another one with no teleporter? You gotta be shitting me. Right, let's check see if there's any fruit near this teleporter. Sometimes that's where they like to hide the fruit. Maybe what I'll do is for next episode, I'll break out the map. Oh, there we go. It's going to say, can we pick up some shit? So we picked up lots of shit today, right? <laughs> 48 of it. <laughs> So that's you gotta give this place credit like I think this is proof that with never dies teleport token system you'll see shit like this happening more often where people will run around on foot finding more stuff it's like just using the teleporters all the time really hinders you especially players that are low on ped and want to make extra ped they should really spend more time running around on foot. Yeah, I was thinking normally when you start at like a revival point or something, they tend to put shit near it. Good shit. Alright, so yeah, maybe I'll, I'll hang out by the water, check out the teleporter map. I'll look one up on Google, but I won't do it while you guys are watching because we've already reached the hour mark, so I'll wrap today's episode up. I'm trying to get the guy ready for a selfie, but... He's always going to look away. Oh well. We'll do it anyways. Alright, see you guys. Thanks everyone for watching the show. Sorry about being so cranky yesterday. I'll try to get my spirits up. Now there's a lot of good and bad things going on these days. Try not to dwell too much on all the bad and try to focus on the good more. I think that can help everyone out these days, right? <laughs> oh yeah, and I got some other good news. I made a new affiliate link screen. <laughs> Alright, so to finish up the show, I got my Patreon, Society6. In the Society6, not only can you buy my shirts, but you can create your own Society6 store. I got the Swag Bucks, which gives you discounts on shopping. Not just Society6, but everywhere. Amazon, eBay, all that jazz. You can get paid to be a professional gamer at the game kit link below. 
and then Hydro TV will pay you in ped to watch videos just like YouTube except a lot of them are actually the same videos so yeah you can get paid to watch that and I highly recommend it because it helps my show out with the referrals and the Bitcoin lottery so if you don't have money for the Patreon if you want to do the Bitcoin lottery then yeah you're all set for that it helps me out oh yeah and of course can't forget this one <laughs> <laughs> no, we got the virtual mate uh, sex toy for men. So yeah, if you want to get your hands on that, it's the latest technology for video games and interaction. I wouldn't be surprised that this technology works its way into Entropia one day because they said they are going to get it to work for two players for like men and women. So I was like, man, that's kind of wild, but it's almost like we're getting into that Demolition Man timeline. <laughs> All right, so yeah, and if it, in the meantime, ladies, if you can't wait because it's only for men right now, you know who to call. <laughs> Just kidding, but yeah, thanks everyone for watching the show. And yeah, I also have uh, Raven Jade's shirt links. If you want to check out those, I got in the more information button. Just click that link below and it'll open up all the affiliate links that I was showing there. And yeah, I think that's, oh yeah, and the Entropia zine. If you want to check out some of the latest articles, I know some of my viewers were asking if I could write more about the game, but I think I recommend Entropia Zine because they already write a lot of good articles about it. And big shout out to everyone who's been writing comments at the end of the show, even critical ones. I really appreciate it. And if you happen to get, let's see, what are my items for today? If you happen to get some Papillon in your vaporizer and you vaporize Papillon and it tastes like shit, and give the show a dislike but if that doesn't happen you can give the show a like i really appreciate it and never purchase the products from my sponsor because i swear it will ruin your life <laughs> bye for now everyone here's the subscribe button and two videos at the same time <laughs>